Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus, the 20th chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 17. Exodus, the 20th chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 17. When you get it, my brother, please read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, busy in the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seven days the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and holiday. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Yes, sir. So now let's turn to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. When you get it, my brother, please read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Yes. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, if we would, turn to the last book of the Bible, Revelation, the 22nd chapter. And we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Revelation 22, and we're going to read verses 14 and 15. When you get it, my brother, please read. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever love it and make it a lie. Yeah, so those get read every Sabbath. And please don't take these lightly because those are simply the keys to salvation. If you simply follow those and obey those and be true to them, you will have eternal life. So with that said, I'd like to introduce myself again. My name is Brother Jeff. I'm glad to be back here, and I'm from the IOG, Birmingham, Alabama. And reading for me today is my beloved brother, DK, also from the Israel of God, Birmingham. And the title of today's lesson is, Christ has risen, now what are you going to do? Christ has risen, now what are you going to do? The title of this lesson came to me and it actually came during uh, what they call Easter. And everybody, they always want to tell you, he risen, he's risen, he's risen, he's risen. Okay, yes, he's risen. But now, what are you going to do? What is your job? When he was here, he commissioned his disciples things that they must do 
while he was there and when he left. And what he commissioned them is the things that is commissioned to us as well, things that we have to do while we are here. And also, they tell you that they don't have to do anything. They are under grace. They don't have to do any works. But we're going to see is that true through the word of God or is that just man running off at the mouth? So with that said, we're going to go to Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke, the 24th chapter, and we're going to read verses 33 to 53. Luke, the 24th chapter, and we're going to read verses 33 to 53. This was Jesus after he was accepted by the Father, returned to the eleven and told them something. And we're going to see what he said. Luke 24, give me verse 33 when you get it, my brother. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, uh -huh. saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. So even reading this right here, it don't even seem like they believed that he was going to be dead three days and rise. Read. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Go ahead. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Uh huh. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Yeah, they did see a spirit. They saw they uh, the father, Jesus. But they should have known it was him because it was prophesied that he was going to do that. Read. And he said unto them, why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? That's right. So you shouldn't be troubled in any kind of thoughts of what this is shouldn't arise in your heart. You should be thankful, praising the Lord. Read. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit have not flesh and bones. So he even see the doubt in their faces of who he is. So he said, hey, don't be afraid. Handle me. Look at the holes in my hand. Look at where they pierced my side. It's me. Read. As ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yes, sir. Read. And while they yet believed not. Look before, at that. They still down who he is. Go ahead. And wondered. He said unto them, have ye here any meat? So if anybody have any question about a spirit being eaten, we see it right there. Have ye any meat? Read. And they gave him a piece, piece of a broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And they didn't give him a pork chop sandwich. They gave him some broiled fish and a honeycomb. Read. And he took it and did eat it before them. Uh huh. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. Yeah, so those are the words that he spoke while he was yet with them. What else? That all things must be fulfilled. That all things must be fulfilled what? Which were written in the law of Moses. Uh-huh. And in the prophets. And in the Psalms concerning me. Yes, so they had those books to read and to study. So they knew that those things should have happened. But the key thing that he said was, was concerning me. He didn't say concerning you, concerning the whole world. He said concerning me. But everybody want to take his death that he nailed everything to the cross. He said concerning me. That's key. Read. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Look at that. The scriptures. So if you ever want to know what the scriptures are, they are from Genesis to Malachi. Read. And he said unto them, thus it is written. And thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Yes, sir. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So now he's given instructions of what's supposed to be done. Read 46 one more time. And said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead okay. the third day. Now give them their instructions. Read. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Just Israel. All nations. All nations. Read. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. 
but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from uh, on high. Yes, sir. So he told them to tarry because power was going to be endued upon them. And we're going to see that. Read. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Uh -huh. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them uh -huh. and, car and carried up into heaven. And they worship him and return to Jerusalem with great joy. Yeah, so now they understanding, like he said, he was going to open their understanding to see, to make them remember, hey, remember what's written in the scriptures about me. Read. And were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Yes, sir. So now we're going to go to Acts, the first chapter. Let's turn over to Acts, the first chapter. And we're going to read verses... 1 through 15. We're going to do some reading today. It's the Sabbath day. We shouldn't have nothing else to do. Get in this book. We can hold off on washing the cars and going to the birthday party. We're going to get a little book today. Acts, the first chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 15. Acts 1, and we're going to read verses 1 through 15. So we're going to see a recap of what we just read in Luke. So Acts 1, give me verse 1, my brother. The former treaties have I made, O the Theophilus, uh -huh. all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Go ahead. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Yes, sir, read. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Go ahead. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Yes, sir. So that's the key, being baptized with the Holy Ghost. And it's being key being baptized with that Holy Ghost. Read. When they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Go ahead. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father have put in his own power. That's right. So it's not for you to know. We got other business we got to handle before you need to worry about that. Read. But... Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. So look what the power was going to do when they receive power. He said, you're going to be witnesses unto Jesus, saying that he is Jesus, that he died and rose on the third day. Read. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, uh -huh. and in Samaria, yes. and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So you got to take this gospel and spread it all over the world, not just in this region, everywhere. Go ahead. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Uh huh. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Uh huh. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. That's right. So the same way you see him leave from this spot, the same place his feet going to come back and touch in this same spot. Read. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet. Yeah, so if you don't believe that, all you got to do is go to Zechariah, the 14th chapter. Start at verse 1 and read on down, and you're going to see where his feet going to boom, hit the Mount of Olives. Take that verse from the top again. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Go ahead. And when they would come in, they went up into the upper room where aboded both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas and ba ba Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon, Z Zelotus and Judas, the brother of James. Yes. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Uh huh. Go ahead. 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. Yeah, so it was about 120 people there at that time. But the Holy Ghost 
had to be given to him because what the Holy Ghost does, it brings things back to your remembrance of what you've been taught. Also, ghosts and spirit is slain, so you also dealing with the word of God, which Jesus had taught them at that time, to take out, to give to all nations, not just Israel. He had to get the disciples together first. Then once he got them together, then now you can take it to all nations. Because at first he just told them only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But of course, once you tell Israel one thing, they mind still stuck on what? What you told them the first time. Take it only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we still see that amongst our Hebrew brothers now. They only want to give the word of God to who? Israel. Because it's Israel only. No. But we see it said all nations. So now let's go to Matthew the third chapter. Matthew the third chapter. And we're going to read verses one all the way to verse three. Matthew the third chapter. We're going to read verses one all the way to verse three. So now we're going to see we're going to bag this up. And we're going to look at everything that they was taught and everything that was done at that time. We're going to see John the Baptist preaching repentance and the coming of the kingdom. And he quoted and fulfilled prophecy at the same time. And we're going to see that. Matthew 3, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. When you get a DK, please read. In the old days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea uh -huh. and saying, repent. Ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah, so that's even on today. We need to, those that haven't repented from what they've done, need to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. That's key. Read. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. That's right. So now, who that is dealing with? That's dealing with John the Baptist, the voice that's crying in the wilderness. So now, Hold your spot right here in Matthew, the third chapter. We're going to go to Isaiah 40. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and we're going to read verses 3 to verse 5. And we're going to see that. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and we're going to read verses 3 to verse 5. Because it's key that you be baptized in the name of Jesus because you want to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You want those things to be brought back to your remembrance, what you've read in this book, what you studied. Isaiah 40, give me verse 3, my brother, when you get it. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, made straight in the desert a highway for our God. So that's what John the Baptist was doing, read. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain hill shall be made low, uh -huh. and the crooks shall be made straight, and the raw places plain. Go ahead. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Yes. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken That's it. That's right. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And that was prophecy fulfilled right there at that particular time. So let's go back to Matthew 3. Pope been holding our spot. I didn't hold mine, but I hope you hear yours. Can't follow my own words. Let's go back to Matthew, the third chapter. And we're going to finish that off. We're going to read verses 5 through 17. Matthew 3, and we're going to read verses 5 through 17. So we're going to see John with the baptism of repentance. And we're going to even see Jesus being baptized. Because we got some... Around here, our Hebrew brothers telling you that you don't have to be baptized. That the word is what washes you. But we're going to see that even going through this lesson. We're going to see what's what. Matthew 3, give me verse 5, DK. Then went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, uh -huh. and were baptized of him in Jordan. Confessing their sins. Yeah, so he went out and he did his job. He was John the Baptist. So if he was John the Baptist, that means he did what? He baptized people. If he was John the plumber, then that means he did what? He went around and he worked on people, what? Plumbing. 
but we see First Baptist. Hey, just saying. All churches should be baptizing in the name of Jesus. But first of all, should be having a holy convocation on the Sabbath. What we at, DK? Self. Read it. But when he saw men of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Yes. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. That's right. Better bring forth them fruits, meat for repentance. That's key, because you got to repent for them sins that you had, for the remission of your past sins. Because you got some that think that, hey, once you repent and be baptized, that's it. That's it for me. I can just sit out there, cross my legs, and kick back. It's all done. Can't read that nowhere in this book. You can't even see that even with Jesus. Because we came out of that water and then we went into the wilderness. What happened? He was tempted by Satan. That's an example to us. When you come out of that water, here it come. Satan went right on you. He might have a hand right there waiting to help you right up out that water. Because he got something for you. As long as you're on his side, you cannot, hey, do what you do. But once you turn and repent, he done lost the soldier. Now he got to try. He's going to go back and see, can he recover his soldier? So you better leave that old man in that water. What we at, DK? Nah. Read it. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Uh-huh. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Yes, he is, read. And now also the ass is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not for good fruit is hewn down and cast into fire. Yeah, that's a warning even to us that we got to bring forth good fruit. Because if you ain't bringing forth good fruit, they're going to ask going to be laid to the root. And you're going to be thrown in that fire. And that's the lake of fire. Because your works is going to be, we read it when we open up, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Because you're not going to have a tree in your yard that year round, 365 days, that tree ain't got a leaf on it. Eventually, you're going to cut it down. And that's the same way that happens to us. If we are not useful for the kingdom, you're going to be hewn down and cast into the fire. Read, brother. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Uh -huh. But he that come after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Yes. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Go ahead. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. Yes, he is. And gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's right. Let the wheat grow with the tares. And he going to do what? Separate it in the harvest. So that's what that's saying. Read. Then coming Jesus from Galilee to join unto John to be baptized of him. That's right. Go ahead. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Uh-huh. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be, be so now, now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. That's right. We got to fulfill all righteousness. So why would you tell somebody that they don't need to be baptized in water. He said to fulfill all righteousness. So that's letting you know that a water baptism is what? Righteous. Read. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we even see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, baptized. So if we, like I, like I say a few times in some of my lessons, they used to wear that little bracelet around their arm, WW, what would Jesus do? Get your book, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you will see what Jesus did. And you follow what he did. Just that simple. Even that little small, little compact Bible you got that don't have the Old Testament, which you're killing yourself with it because you don't have the scriptures. But it even tells you the walk that Jesus did. But you're missing something because Jesus tell you, he refer you back to Daniel. He refer you back to Isaiah. So how are you going to go back to Daniel and Isaiah and think about those little small Bibles? Who do they give those little small Bibles to now? 
They give it to the kids. So the kids going through that little small Bible trying to find Daniel, trying to find Isaiah, and it's not in there. Because I went to pick my daughter up from college, and I said, you got everything, baby girl? She said, yeah. And I look on the table, and there's one of them little small Bibles on the table. And I said, uh, where you get that from? She said, they was up here passing them out. I said, it's good you leaving it right there on that table. <laughs> but guess what I did? I picked it up, and I got it in my book bag right here. Because I wanted to take it and use it for an example to show that you're missing the main ingredient. You got to have it. It's the main ingredient. Let's go to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians 5. And we're going to read verses 22 to 27. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And we're going to read verses 22 to 27. So we're going to bump a few little scriptures here that don't, it's all, all of it important, so I ain't, ain't going to say it ain't important. It is important. Because it's wrote in this book, so don't let me watch my mouth. Shut up. Ephesians 5, give me verse 22 when you get it, my brother. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands yes. as unto the Lord. Uh-huh. So the that's the key. So when you submit yourself to your husband, it's the same way as you submitting yourself to the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife, uh -huh. even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Yes, sir. So that's the whole key. The body, the church, us. We are that body. Read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. In everything. It's a key word in there. O W N. Own husband. Read. Husband. So if you and if you're not married, who your husband is? There it is right there. So he your own husband. So you subject unto him. Not little James or little, little Daryl in the street. You subject to Jesus. Read. Husbands. Love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's right. Go ahead. That he might, might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So we got people that hang their hat on that last part right there with the washing of water by the word. But yeah, true. that is very true. The word should wash you. And once that word washes you, then what you going to do? Go get washed in that baptism pool. The mind has to be clean first for you to understand what thus says the Lord. You got to flush out all that dirt out of them hills with this word. Get all that clutter, all that hoarding you've been doing, hoarding all that stuff around from when you was a child all the way to the age of 20, to the age of accountability. Because if they dumped you in that water like they did me when you were young, you just got a free swimming lesson. That's all it was. That's all it was. That's it. Or go to some of the warm, they hold your head over the thing, and they pull that little cup. My big old head shoot, they need the whole jug to pour over there. They ain't did that my way. They got some shampoo, and then start washing your hair. Because it was a waste of time. You do not know or understand what you're doing. And you can read that in Deuteronomy. That's why those that was under 20 years old, they did not suffer. Because they did not have any knowledge of sin. That's the whole key. But the parents did, and they wandered in their wilderness. What? What are they? Wandering around till they died. Where we at, DK? 27. Read it that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle yes. or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So all men to That's good right there, DK. That 27 is key, family, because that's us. It said that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. That's talking about us. It ain't talking about this building. 
Y'all hopefully we're gonna move on to big and better things. This building might turn to an auto mechanic shop or, or turn to anything, a hair salon. It ain't this building. It's the building, it's the people. It said not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So that's the way you have to be presented to your God. That's the same way Christ was presented. He was a lamb with no blemishes. So now let's go to Acts the 10th chapter. Acts 10. And we're going to read verses 36 to 48. Acts the 10th chapter. And we're going to read verses 36 to 48. So we're going to see some things that was mentioned in what we read earlier in Luke. And the question is, should we be baptized in water? So we're still dealing with that. Or the word after Christ's death. So we know we need both, but is the water baptism necessary after Christ's death? Acts 10, give me verse 36, my brother, when you get it. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Mm -hmm. That word, I say ye, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Yes, go ahead. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So y'all see what that 38 say? It said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about going, who went about doing good and healing all with oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So that's what you receive when you went there and being baptized in the name of Jesus and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You receive the same thing that the son received from the father. But you got to have faith. And I'm jumping ahead of myself. But you got to have faith. Faith is the root of it all. And it's simply believing. If you don't believe what this book say, or you just believe some of it, you're in trouble. You got to believe it all. Doubting nothing. What we on, 39? 39. Read. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Yes. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before of God. Yes. Even to us who did eat and drink with him uh -huh. after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto, unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. So look at that. It's giving us right here, if we just simply pay attention to what's written on these pages, it's giving you your walking orders, your marching orders when you go out into this world. He said, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. Read. To him give all the prophets witness uh -huh. that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. Yes, sir. So you got to believe. That's where your faith come in. Anytime you see the word believe in him, faith can go right in that spot. Read. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Now, listen to that verse right there, family. Do you see what that say? It said, while Peter yet spake these what? Words. Remember we're saying that you ain't got to be water baptized no more? He spake the words, and what else? Read that again, DK. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Which heard the what? Word. Which heard the word. Go ahead. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. So we know they of the circumcision, those that was Israel. Go ahead. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So look at that. It actually happened beforehand. They heard the word. The word what? Cleansed them. And they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. But we're going to keep reading. We ain't going to stop right there like everybody else do. Read. 
For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answer Peter. Now this key right here. Read. Can any man forbid water? Look at that. Can any man forbid water? So if you're telling somebody that they don't have to be water baptized, you are forbidding them what? Water. Read. That these should not be baptized? Uh-huh. What happened? Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Uh-huh. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then pray they him to tarry certain days. So they got the word. They was washed with the word of God. But they also was washing their water as well. So it is necessary. You can't forbid nobody the water. It's commanded that you be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus. But for some reason, people like to take half of the script and don't keep reading. So if you're doing a recipe, you cooking, and somebody pass you down the recipe to cook a meal, and you only read half of it, then what's going to happen? You're going to have a half-cooked meal. So it's the same way. It takes all the ingredients to make everything up. It takes all the word of God for everything to be fulfilled. But if we read earlier, everything was fulfilled for who? Christ. Let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Matthew 4. Hope everybody understood that right there. So if anybody ever come to you with that, with that water baptism, because we got our Hebrew brothers definitely going to tell you that. To take them right here and show them. They got the word, and then what happened? They got in their water. Matthew 4, and we're going to read verses 12 to 13, then 17 to 25. Matthew, the fourth chapter. We're going to read verses 12 and 13. 17 all the way down to 25. So we're going to see Jesus gathering his disciples and going out to spread the gospel and healing the people and casting out devils. So the thing about it is, as we read, those in here that's been baptized in the name of Jesus for remission of sin and received the gift of the Holy Ghost, you got the powers to cast out devils and things too. Well, guess what it takes to be able to do it? That word that I said earlier, it takes faith. Do you have the faith of a mustard seed to be able to do it? And I know some of us know how small a mustard seed is. It's not big at all. Matthew 4, give me verse 12, my brother. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Uh -huh. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zabulon and Nephthalim. Uh-huh. That it might be... Oh, skip down to verse 17. You go, I'm, I'm, I ain't paying attention to my own notes. Skip down to verse 17 and read. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, family, pay attention. Pay attention. You got Jesus. They, they had Jesus right there with them to show them exactly what to do. So again, if we follow, simply follow these words, he's showing us exactly what to do when we out there in the streets. We need to preach what? To repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. So he's showing us what to do. Read. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, uh -huh. casting a net into the sea. Yes. But they were fishers. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So when you're out there doing your evangelizing and passing out flies, that's what you are. You are fishers of men and women. He's showing you how to do it. He's giving you a great example of how to do it. Read. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Uh -huh. And going on from this, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with, with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Uh -huh. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. So look what they did. They immediately dropped everything that they were doing, and they followed Jesus. 
you're going to have something that's not going to follow you. You're even going to see Jesus tell you that in this book. If you go to them and they don't receive you, what he told you to do? When you leave, dust what? The dust of that city off your feet. Because he told you it's going to be worse for them than them for who? Sodom and Gomorrah. So many is not going to hear this word. It's sad. And the ones that are not hearing it is some people that's our family. Even some people that's in our own household. What we up, DK? 23. Read. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Yeah, so he's showing them the power of being able to do all of this. Read. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, uh -huh. and those who were possessed with devils, and those which were, were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Yes. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. Yes. So we have those powers to do that by simply praying over the sick. That's why I tell you in James about praying over the sick, anointing the sick with all. So we have that power to do it. But we have to believe. Of course, the person that's being prayed for, they got to have the faith too because my prayer don't mean nothing for you if you don't believe that it's going to work. It's a waste of time. So it's a double-edged sword. It goes both ways. They got to believe, and the person that's praying, praying has to believe and have the faith that that prayer will heal. But who has the ultimate decision in it? It's the will of God. So now let's go to Matthew, the 17th chapter. Matthew 17. And we're going to read verses 14 to 21. Matthew, the 17th chapter. And we're going to read verses 14 to 21. And so we're going to see right here an example of the disciples not having their faith. Matthew 17, give me verse 14, my brother, when you get it. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic uh -huh. and sore vexed, for oft times he fallen into the fire and off in, into the water. So when you see, he said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. Did we not read that you had the powers, that Jesus even had the powers to heal the one that was sick with the lunatic? Read. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. So look at that. He brought him to the disciples, and they could not cure him. Read. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless. So look what the first words he used. O faithless. Read. And perverse generation. Yes. How long shall I be with you? Uh huh. How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. So Jesus was cold with his words, but he was true. Sometimes you have to be a little, you got to know who you went to. You can't be cold to everybody because some, some people wear their feelings on their shoulders. That's just real talk. So you be a little cold to them. Now they didn't shut down and they didn't turn back. But we see when, when the disciples was together, some did turn back. Because they couldn't handle it. You got to be able to handle this. If you're going to get out there in them streets and evangelize and spread this word, you cannot say, okay, before I go, let me put my feelings on my shoulders and we go out here. And you're going to get them knocked clean off your shoulder. You're going to get your feelings hurt. They're going to punch you in the stomach. They're going to do everything out there in them streets and hurt your feelings. And the main ones that do it is your family. Because you didn't join the cult, what didn't happen? The Christmas party, the Christmas dinner ain't the same without you. Then they try to make you feel guilty. It was just something about the way you decorated that tree. <laughs> ain't got nobody to reach up to the top and put that angel up there. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you stuff that I heard for myself. Because I was the one that reached up there and put that angel up there on top of that tree. I'm, just, I'm telling you. Where we at, DK? 18. Go ahead. 
and Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast them out? Uh-huh. So pay attention to this, because this is something that we need. We need to arm ourselves with this. Read. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. So we can say because of your faithless again, because you lack faith. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you, uh -huh. if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mount, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, uh -huh. and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Yes. How be it this kind go up not out, but by prayer and fast. So he just gave you some keys right there. It takes prayer and fasting sometimes. So how many of us going to actually stand now? We remember the prayer part. But we don't want to not eat. You mean tell me I can't eat? Hey, it is what it is. If you want this removed from you, you got to make some sacrifices. That's what he's trying to tell you. And it's not only for the person that's doing it, but it's for the person that you're doing it for. If you want certain things removed from you, you have to make what? Sacrifices. So let's move on. Let's go to Mark, the second chapter. Let's turn over to Mark, Mark 2. And we're going to read two, we're going to read verses 15 to 17. Mark, the second chapter. And we're going to read verses 15 to verse 17. So the same way we saw Jesus take that word out to the sick, we got to take it out to the sick as well. And a lot of times it ain't saying that, you know, yeah, you may need to go to the hospitals, the nursing homes, those places like that. But it's sick people in the streets right now. That physically, they okay. But they sick up here because they're not in this building. Brother Todd, them should have a shoe spoon. Hey, sis, can y'all can move over here and let the, let the new people sit right here? Can y'all, he should be shuffling people around right now. It should be folks standing up in the back. He should be bringing chairs and, and staging them right over here because the people are trying to get in the building to hear the word. Even to have a, a loudspeaker playing on how they have it. Y'all have been in them Sunday churches where you go in the overflow room. Don't act like you ain't never been in this. You had to sit in the overflow room. And you sitting there mad because you can't look at the preacher. Because you know some of them that had that TV in there where you could see him. Some of you were just hearing his voice. But it should be like this here. We got to figure out why. Where we at, DK? 15. Read. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at me in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus uh -huh. and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. Go ahead. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with the publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, how is it that he eat and drank it with publicans and sinners? Yeah, so look at that, asking the question. What you doing with them? Why are you over there talking to them? Read. When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician. That's right. So they that are whole have no need for a physician. Yeah, every now and then we have a brother or sister that's in here that need the word, that need to hear something, that need to, a little uplifting. But you shouldn't just be constantly talking to the people in here. You got to take it out there and talk to the people. Because they are the ones that need the physician. This is the hospital. I know y'all know about General Hospital. This is the general hospital. This is where they need to be, to be healed. Read. But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's right. So he came to call sinners to repentance. Let's go to Jeremiah, the eighth chapter. Jeremiah, the eighth chapter. And we're going to read verses 19 to 22. Because everybody in here should be a nurse or a doctor. So 
Some of us, uh, I don't know all the little titles when you first start off, a CPN, QRN, or registered nurse, or the one that just give you to take your blood pressure. You know, we got some of those in here. The only thing they do is just come and take your blood pressure. They haven't been trained up yet to do the big work. Then we got some in here that does the heavy lifting. But everybody has a role to play. When you go in the hospital, everybody, well, everybody in there got scrubs on, don't they? That works there. Because they have a role to play. So we have to play our role as well. Jeremiah 8. Give me verse 19, DK. Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country. Uh huh. Is not the Lord in Zion? Yes, go ahead. Is not her king in her? Mm -hmm. why, ha why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? Yes, sir. Serving them other gods. Go ahead. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. And we are not saved, and you still ain't saved to this day, because you got to endure to the end. That came out of Jesus' mouth. Read. For the hurt of the daughter of my people and my hurt, I am black. Astonished have taken hold on me. Now watch this. Read. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no bomb in Gilead? Read. Is there no physician there? So it got to be a physician to administer the bomb. The word is here. That's what the bomb is, the word. It's there. But where are the physicians to administer it? Read. Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? So why is it that the people are not in here? That's the question that we, that's the million dollar, no, mind the price, I forgot the price, of, the price of living that went up. That's the billion dollar question. Can't say million no more because million ain't enough. That's the billion dollar question that we have to ask ourselves. Don't be looking over there. Yeah, if she just simply come to church and Get out here and when we go out there and out, don't be just looking over there at Sister Jones. You got to look at yourself. It all starts at home. You make sure you there. When Todd call an uh, assembly to go out and do uh, evangelize, make sure you there. Ain't no worry about who's not there. They got an answer for that. And it ain't the answer person they got an answer to. It ain't Todd. Luke. The eighth, that was the, that was the end of that, brother? Yes. All right, Luke, the eighth chapter. And we're going to read verses 43 to 48. Luke, the eighth chapter. And we're going to read verses 43 to 48. Because this is important. Like I said, Jesus is giving examples, and this is another example that he's going to give. Because trust me, if the people know this is the hospital, don't you know they're going to be in here? Man, them folks say they can hear you in here. Why do you think they run to all them other churches, to all them other preachers, you see them on the commercial? I, I bought a bottle of the water, and, and I went to my mailbox, and I had $15,000. <laughs> because they believe that they can go in that place, and they can receive something out of it. So it got to be the same way here. We have to show it. We have to be the example. Luke 8, verse 43 to 48. When you get it, my brother, please read. And a woman having an issue of her blood 12 years, mm -hmm. which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. So look, she spent her money on them doctors that's at the real hospital. Finally, she didn't gave up. She had to come to the head physician. All right, I don't know what they call the big man at the hospital, the big doctor at the hospital. We're going to call it like the black folks said, the big doctor. Go ahead. Came behind him and touched the border of his garments, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. Uh -huh. And Jesus said, who touched me? Yes, go ahead. When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee. And press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? Uh huh. And Jesus said, Somebody have touched me. Yes, sir. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. That's right. Somebody had faith enough to touch him, and he even felt that faith go through him. 
Read. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Yes, sir. So that's what it is. It's to not only to be in here reading this word and hearing it every Sabbath day, but you got to work on your faith as well. Because you're going to be going through some stuff and you're going to be like, Lord, I come every Sabbath day. I, I, I serve you. I, I'm not late. I'm, I'm, I'm on the, uh, 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 the usher board. I sing in the choir. I do this. I do that. Why haven't my situation changed? And guess what you got to do? Pick that mirror up and look in it. And find out why your situation ain't changed. Your answer going to be in this book. But you got to search it out. You got to pray about it. What else he told you got to do? You got to fast. Come on. Maybe miss a meal or two. He going to give you the answer. If you want it. Mark the fourth chapter. Mark the fourth chapter. We're going to read verses 16 and 17. So now we for the deal with you have been in that water and been baptized. You done went out and you've been spreading this word. But now guess what come along with that? Some persecutions. Can you endure it? Like that old song that uh, New Edition had. Can you stay in the rain? Because it's coming. Mark 4, we're going to read verses 16 and 17. When you get it, my brother, please read. And these are they likewise, which are so on stony ground. Uh-huh. Y'all remember this lesson that Brother Bull, we just had it this, this past Sabbath. Talking about the parable of the sowing of the seeds. Go ahead. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So think about when you got this word, when you heard it. I know when I heard it, it was something totally different from what I grew up on. To the point that what I had, when, when after I heard it, I had to go home and dump, dust that Bible off and pull it out and read it and say, oh, wow. And then it just so happened I had a Bible that had the little precepts in it that could take you to somewhere else. And I thank the Lord for that because it took me somewhere else and I saw it again. Then I'm like, man, wow, for real? So my eyes was open to it. What we at, DK? 17. Read. And have no root in themselves. So, but wait a minute. This person don't have no root in them. You got to get root in you before you take off running. You got to make sure you ground it first. And guess who's that foundation that you got to be grounded on? You got to be grounded on Jesus. Because he is that chief cornerstone. He is the foundation. He is the what? Root. And I know y'all have heard Brother James say before, you got to stay close to the vine. You got to stay close to the root. The further out you get, the further off you get messed up. So if you immediately take away from that root without getting any nutrition, you're going to do what? You're going to die. You're going to fall away from this word. Take 17 from the top again have no root in themselves uh -huh. and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake immediately they are offended yes sir so when them persecutions come when mama and them ask you what in the world wrong with you like oh like my grandma used to say what's ailing you and you can't stand it and you can't take it because they don't want you around them they talk about the Lord, 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 God, God, God. But as soon as you crack the book over and say, Big Mama, look at this. Look at what I read. Look at what I learned. Mm -hmm. Get away from me with that. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. So that's the word Jesus talk about. You earn me with your lips, but your heart is far away from me. That was 48 when... Yes, sir. I mean, not four days, but 17. Yes, sir. So now let's go to Matthew, the fifth chapter. 
Matthew 5. I know we all have seen it. As soon as you take it to him, you'll be like, man, look, because you're going to try to take it to the one you think the holiest. Okay. <laughs> you're going to find out. <laughs> you're going to find out fast. Matthew 5, give me verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. So look what the Lord said you are. You are blessed for being persecuted for what? Righteousness sake. So don't let that knock you off to where you don't want to come. Brother Todd looking for you. Hey, sister, have you seen Sister Beth? She ain't been back the last two, three Sabbaths. She done went home and got her head knocked off her shoulders, trying to take it to that person that she thought was so holy. But didn't get rooted up in this word to be able to handle it, to be able to take it. Y'all know how a tree is that got strong roots in the ground. It takes something to knock it down. You ain't going to just knock it down. It's going to take some beating on to get it down. Read. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You have a reward if you can withstand the persecutions. Read. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you uh -huh. and persecute you. Yes, sir. And shall say all manner of evil against you. Look at that. Look at that. Falsely accusing you because you simply bringing them what? The word of God. But they're accusing you of being in a cult. They're accusing you following Satan. That's really what they're doing because it ain't nothing but God and Satan. So if you ain't following God, you got to be following who? Satan. Read. For my sake, uh -huh. rejoice and be exceedingly glad. So rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Why? For great is your reward in heaven. Yes, sir. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So you can go back in, from Genesis, come all the way up into Malachi, and you're going to see prophets persecuted for this word of God. So be feel blessed, feel honored that you've been put in a group with those people. And continue to serve the Lord. Don't waver. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. We got a few more. We ain't going to be here long. 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. But it's just something that we got to think about. Because I've been talking, talked about it some on our way down here with the brothers. You know, because we had a brother back at church that he was dealing with some uh, Gentiles. And uh, they had let him into their little Bible study group. But you know what happened when he got in there? He laid the book on the table. And guess what they said? You need to find you a study group at the Israel of God. He bowed out first. He said, you know what, I'm going I'm to step out. I'm going to step to the side. And, uh, you know, because the, one of the, the, they, they, they were sitting in a group meeting, and uh, the other guys had left, and it was just him and one particular guy still there. And going through what we was at, at the Acts 10, they always think that that Acts 10 is dealing with food. Show you where they mind at. That's why I told you, put that food down and fast. But thinking that Acts 10, dealing with food, is dealing with you not having respect of persons. That the word of God was for everybody. No, that ain't what that's dealing with. So the guy, he got a little upset. Next thing you know in the text group, he told him, you need to find you a group at the Israel of God. But he got to count that all joy. Because persecution's going to get worse than that. 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. Give me verses 1 all the way to verse 6. Paul and Silvanius and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me. Because that your faith grow exceedingly, mm -hmm. and the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounding. Yes, sir. 
so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God mm -hmm. for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. So look at that. For all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. He's letting them know that you're going to endure some stuff. And we got to understand that as well. Read, DK. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of So look at that. That is a token. You're getting credit when you go through persecution and you're able to withstand it. He told you blessed. Read that verse again. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Yes. That ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. So look at that on the flip side. If you can't withstand tribulation and persecution, then you're not worthy for the kingdom of God. That's something to think about, family. Something to think about. Verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So wait a minute. So look what God said. It's a righteous thing for him to do what? Recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So you ain't got to go out and try to get no vengeance on somebody that, that put tribulation and persecuted you. The Lord said he going to recompense. Let him deal with it. He can do it better than we can. It's going to be a slow crumble sometime. You see him one day looking all good and the next thing you know everything that fell apart. So let him handle it. Let's go to Luke the 21st chapter. Luke, the 21st chapter. And we're going to read verses 5 through 19. Luke, the 21st chapter. And we're going to read verses 5 all the way to 19. So we're going to see something that Jesus is going to tell his disciples. He's going to give them a warning. He's going to tell them to let no man deceive you. And he's going to warn them about future persecutions that they may go through, which some of them did end up going through. And then this warning is even for us because this is future prophecy that we're going to read as well. Luke 21, give me verse 5, my brother. And that song spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts. Uh -huh. He said, as for these things which ye behold, the days will come, in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another. Yes. That shall not be thrown down. Mm -hmm. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Yes, so that temple has already been thrown down. It's been torn all the way down to the ground. Read. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. So look what he said. The first thing out of his mouth is take heed that ye be not deceived. So we have to be careful of that as well. The easiest way to find out whether you're being deceived or not is to read your Bible. Nobody can give you nothing. If they tell you something, you first thing you ask them, book and verse. Read, brother. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. So they're going to say that he is Christ, but what? And the times draw near, go ye not therefore after them. That's right. So go not after them. They're going to tell you that I am Christ, but their works are going to show you that they're not a servant of Christ. All you got to do is watch what they're doing. It's not going to line up with the book. Read. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Uh -huh. For these things must come first, come to pass. But the end is not by and by. That's right. So we see wars. We just had wars, rumors of wars, so on and so forth. You can't let those things shake you. Read. Then said he unto them, Nations shall rise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, uh -huh. and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, deliver you up to the synagogues and the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So he said, but before all those things happen, those earthquakes and all those things happen, he said, 
that they going to lay their hands on you. He didn't say that they might lay their hands on you, but it's a chance they might lay their hands on you. They are going to lay their hands on you for this word of God. Read. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. That's right. So it's going to turn to you for a testimony. How you react to the situation. Read. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to me meditate before what ye shall answer. So now you ain't got to sit there when you've been brought before the kings and the, and, and, and the rulers and you're being persecuted. You don't have to sit back and try to, you know what, I think I'm going to say this. I'm going to this and that. Because the first thing you're going to do is you're going to try to save your life. And he told you if you try to save your life, you're going to do what? You're going to lose your life. Because you don't want to die this flesh and blood body. So that's the life that you're trying to save. You ain't trying to save your eternal life. You're trying to save this flesh and blood body. So take no thought. That's what he's telling you. Why? Read. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Look at that. He going to give you the words to say at that time. And they ain't going to be able to resist the words that you're saying. Read. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren. Uh-oh. That is. You're going to be betrayed by parents and brethren. Read. And kids, folks. And kids, folks. That's our word right there. Some kin, folks. Read. And friends. So, uh, how many of y'all in here? You ain't got to raise your hand. Y'all know y'all lost them friends that you grew up with by being in here. Because they doing something today that you normally was doing today. Read. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. It's coming. That time is coming. Get ready. The only way you're going to prepare yourself for when this comes is to make sure that you got that book here. Just like that movie, The Book of Eli. Come to find out that book was empty. He had it here. He laid back on that bed at the end. In the beginning, God, he ran it all down because he had it up here. So you got to have it up here. When that time comes, when you be persecuted, you may not have your iPhone or your Android with you, your tablet, your notebook, not even this hard copy Bible. You got to have it here. Read. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. Look at that. A hair on your head ain't going to perish. And what else? And your patience possesses ye your soul. So you got to have patience. You can't get in a hurry trying to speed it up. You got to trust in the Lord. But it goes all the way back to that one word again. Faith. So now. Let's go to Romans the fifth chapter. Romans 5. And we're going to read verses 1 all the way down to 20. Romans the fifth chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 all the way down to verse 20. So they tell you again, going back, we not under the law, we under grace. God did it all. So if he did it all for you, why are you going to church? Why are you going up here throwing your money on the floor to a man that walking and stepping and running all over your money? If God did it all. You under grace. You should be able to go out there and do whatever you want to do, and it's going to be okay. But we see them out there doing whatever they want to do, because the same one that said that they so holy this and so holy that, watch them and see what they do. That's why he said, your works. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Romans 5. Give me verse 1, my brother. Therefore, being justified by faith, uh -huh. we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So look what that said, being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Uh -huh. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So when you see that justify, that just simply means... You've been set free. He justified you. So you've been set free. So it said, therefore, being set free by the faith, your faith, your faith.
faith you're believing, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by what again? Faith by your belief into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So that's what we are hoping for. So that's showing you again that you're not saved yet because you're hoping for something. If you're saved, why hope? Read. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. So look, when you're going through them tribulations, what you do, you glory. Thank you, Lord, because you understand that it's a reward for you for going through those tribulations. Read. Knowing that tribulation is working patience. So you know that what? We saw patience, then we just read patience. Tribulation work of patience. So by you going through those tribulations, now you learn that, hey, you know what? This happened when I did this before. So now, pace yourself. Be patient. Understand it. when I take this word and I set it on the table, they're going to come at me this way, they're going to come at me that way. Prepare yourself. So patience comes with tribulation. What else? And patience, experience, and experience hope. So now you get experience because you done went through it before. Read. And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Yes, sir. Go ahead. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Go ahead. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet pre for a good man, some will even dare to die. Uh-huh, go ahead. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it's nothing that we did or we deserve for him. He just simply, to recover man from a death sentence, he died for us. Because all was under the... Jeff, shut up. We better read that, man. You telling the story for you, you can get there. And I can't stand for nobody to tell you about a move and they tell you the whole move. For, and she going to go over there and she going to do this and she going to do that and this going to happen to him. And then wait to the end because you're going to see old boy run over there. I don't even want to watch the movie now. So I'm trying to, let me let the, let the movie play out. Go ahead, DK. M much more then, <laughs> being now justified by his blood. That's right. So being justified by his blood, set free. Because we was in a pit without water. His blood set us free. Read. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Shall be saved from his wrath. Go ahead. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. So he said when we were enemies, you was enemies because. Read. Go ahead. <laughs> Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Uh-huh. And not only so. But we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Yes, sir. We have received the atonement through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you look at the atonement and you look at the Passover, they really like one and the same. Read. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So look at that right there. It said death passed upon all men. So that means that death passed upon even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. For until the law, sin was in the world. Uh-huh. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. So that knocks that notion off that you ain't got to keep these commandments that they done away with. They were nailed to the cross because how can you have sin and not have a law? It said, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. But if you go up there and you go in Sister Mary's pocketbook and take something out of it, it's going to be a problem. Or you go pickpocket his billfold, it's going to be a problem. And you steal out that plate, it's going to be a problem. Because the Bible said, what? Well, thou should not steal. Read. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Look at that. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. What? Even over them that had not sinned. Whoa. Even over them that had not sinned. Death still reigned over them. What else? After the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Uh-huh. But 
not as the offense. Uh huh. So also is the free gift. So that that grace is grace was that free gift that he gives to us. He had grace and mercy on us this morning because we him. He gave us another shot. Read. For if through the offense of one, many be dead. Through the offense of one, Adam, go ahead. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. Yes, so his blood abounds over the sin that Adam committed. It covers everybody. Go ahead. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Yeah, so it justifies everybody. But you got to have the faith and believe in order for that blood to cover you for it to work. You can put that blood on you all day long, but your faith is what's going to activate it. Your belief. Read. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That's right. All men. Read. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. That's right. That's from Adam disobedience all the way for Jesus making uh, his obedience made us righteous. Re read. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Uh-huh. But, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Yeah. So they see that right there, and they see that that grace much more abound over sin. They take that and they run with it. Don't go on down to the next chapter, but let's see what the next chapter say. Romans 6, give me verse 1. We should already be there. Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So should we just continue to sin because we under grace? That grace going to keep on abounding us sinning? What it say? God forbid. God forbid. What? How shall we that are dead to sin Live any longer therein. You supposed to be dead to sin. Read. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Yes, sir, because y'all know how the baptism go. If a toenail come out of that water, what they got to do? They got to redip you, baby. And trust me, I done been there and I done seen folk get dipped by three times Cause for some reason they want to kick a leg up. Them brothers back there know, cause them two brothers right there do the baptism, and they know. I don't know what it was about that that day, but every time you look around, that foot kept coming up. They'll hold the leg, and for some kind of way, that foot will come up. So, read, brother. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into into death. Uh huh. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. That's right. So that's when you come out of that water, you're supposed to walk in newness of life. You wash that old man off of you. Yeah, he's going to get out and he's going to towel off and he's going to follow you. But you got to keep him off you with this word of God. The same way Jesus kept Satan off of him, when you read Matthew 4 and you read Luke 4, the same way you keep them off of them with the word of God. What we at, DK? Five. Read it. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So that's the same way it is when you put in that baptism pool. That's why they submerge you fully. Because you are planted in the likeness of his death. And then you are being raised out of that water. What? A new creature, a new person. Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Yes, sir, that we should not serve sin. So if you keep reading this, you will notice that Paul will come off grace and start talking about sin. You're not serving sin. 
So yes, the gift of grace is very important, but you can't not take grace for granted and think that you can go out and continue to sin. God forbid. So let's go to Titus, the third chapter. Titus, the third chapter. We got one more after this. Titus, the third chapter. We're going to read verses 1 all the way to verse 11. Then we're going to skip to 14. Titus, the third chapter. We're going to read verse 1 all the way, verse 1 to 11. And we're going to skip down to verse 14. So we are justified, set free by the grace of God through his mercy. Long-suffering God. So all those attributes we got to have and we got to show to our brothers and sisters. Titus 3, give me verse 1. Hold up, hold a second, my brother. Hold up, because I still hear some pages turning. That Titus get, get a little sticky sometimes. If you got a new Bible, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're going to be over there blowing, blowing on pages. That's why I try to make sure. I, I remember my one day I, I, uh, I left my Bible in the other car, and I had to use a little Bible, another Bible I got in my book bag, and it's a new Bible. Man, I'm up here fighting and wrestling, and I'm just trying to talk, and I, I'm telling myself, we're going to wait on everybody to get that, and everybody waiting on me. I'm, a, I'm up there blowing on pages and everything. Titus 3, give me verse 1, my brother. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Yes, sir. To speak evil of no man. Uh-huh. To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Unto all men. Not telling no man to kiss your shoes and lick your boots and do all this other stuff that our, our Hebrew brothers be telling these folks to do, and the Gentiles to do out there. It said, all men. Read. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, right. serving divers' lusts. Yes, sir. And pleasures, living in madness and envy, hateful, and hating one another. Yes, sir. Go ahead. But after that, the kindness and love of our God, of God our Savior, toward man appeared. Go ahead. Not by works of righteousness. So look at that right there. Not by works of righteousness. Go ahead. Which we have done. Which we have done. So we have done works of righteousness. He didn't appear because the works of righteousness, but go ahead. But according to his mercy. He did it because of his mercy. Go ahead. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. And that's the word. He washed us with the word. Then we saw when they were washed with the word, they went and what? Hopped in that water and got baptized. Read. Which he said on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Go ahead. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Yes, sir. Go ahead. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you got some works you got to do. You got some works. It said, read that verse 8 again. This is a faithful saying. So it's telling you this is a faithful saying. Go ahead. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. That you affirm this constantly in your mind. What? That they which have believed in so God. That they which have faith in God. What else? Might be careful to maintain good works. So he's telling you to be careful to maintain your good works. Go ahead. These things are good and profitable unto men. That's right. So they're profitable to you. The profit that you're going to gain is what? Eternal life. That's what we, I, wait a minute. Let me not speak for everybody. That's what you're supposed to be here for. You ain't here for no social gathering. I'm here to see Sister Mary. I'm here to see Brother David. No, you're here to gain eternal life, to learn how to gain eternal life. Yeah, it's good to see your brothers and sisters. But at the same time, know why you're here. Because in seeing your brothers and sisters, like my beloved brother James say all the time, sometimes they do need to see your face. Sometimes they do need to see you and get that hug. Because they ain't got it those other six days. So they need that hug that seventh day. 
So remember, when you don't come to class, somebody miss you. Where we at, DK? Nah. Read it. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivers about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. That's right. So that verse 9 right there, I see that through a lot of our Hebrew brothers. I ain't going to call no organization names. Y'all know. But they do everything that's listed in that. Verse 10. A man that is inherited after the first and second admonition rejects. So you got to reject him after that. Go ahead. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinned, being condemned of himself. So we see that we read again in verse 8 while we read it over that you got to be careful to maintain your good works. So let's finish it off in James. James, the second chapter. And we're going to read verse 14, and then we're going to skip down to verse 17 to 26. Oh, I left out verse 14 with Titus. Get it to me then, because I got it on there for a reason. Don't let me turn away from it, brother. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Go back to Titus, family. I'm sorry. I probably was the only one that turned. <laughs> Titus 3, verse 14, my brother. And let ours also learn to maintain good works yes. for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. So your good works got to be necessary works, and don't let them be unfruitful. You got to take this word out here to people. Your works have to be fruitful. You don't want to be a tree with no leaves and no fruit on it. Because you're going to be hewn down and cast into the fire. Like we say sometimes, fire. Now let's go to James, the second chapter. James 2. And we're going to read verse 14. Then we're going to skip to verses 17 and 26. So this word that we've been talking about all day, we're going to see it put with another word that we just started talking about. Faith and works. James 2, give me verse 14, my brother, when you get it. Where does it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? So it's telling you, can your faith save you alone? No. Skip down to verse 17 and read. We're going to see it. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you thee my faith by my words. Yes, sir. So you can't say you believe. Man, I believe every word that's in that Bible, this and that. And there you will sit, shut up in the house. You come to Sabbath class, and then before we can even say amen, you're, you're pull off out of the parking lot. The only thing you believe in is I need to hurry up and get back to the house. That's it. Read. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Look at that. So the devils even believe. They believe this word. They believe what it say. What they told Jesus. Well, have you come to 20 minutes before our time? Because they believe what the word said. They know they got nothing but a short time to come. Read. But without no. O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Uh-huh. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Yes, sir. So through his works, faith was made perfect. God said, now I know. Read. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Yes, he was called a friend of God. So look what you can be called a friend of God if you simply have that faith and works. Go ahead. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only? Yes, sir. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works. So look at her title. Rahab the harlot. So we don't know if she was messing with multiple 
men or somebody else's man or whatever it was, but we see Rahab the harlot. But she was justified by her what? Her works. Her works was able to stand because she what? She believed. She had the faith. Take that from the top. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Uh huh. For as the body without the spirit is dead. So the body without the spirit. So if I if I hold my breath long enough, and then somebody else, because eventually I'm gonna take my hand out, and somebody else come and continue with it and take the breath away from me, I'm gonna die. So without without breath of life in this body, you die. Read. So, faith without works is dead also. So, faith without works is dead also. What you doing don't mean nothing. If you don't believe, and if you ain't putting what you believe to work. So, with that said, I hope somebody got some understanding out of this lesson. Christ has risen. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to go show your faith and your works. Thank you for your time.